Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we turn to talking about the NFL or the National Football League, the biggest football league here in America. NFL has had a lot of struggles recently and they've gotten more and more political over the years too. We of course remember the Colin Kaepernick era from a few years back when he started kneeling during the National Anthem of course. Colin Kaepernick was just the first in many players who started to kneel back then and now years later and the NFL has never seemed to recover from that terrible conversation controversy. Of course, America and people here have a right to protest, and that's what those kneelers thought they were doing. And to them, they were, but really, to us, we saw them as being un-American jerks who were kind of pushing this fake news narrative about the police being brutal to minorities when, really, they're just doing their jobs and trying to protect us and save lives. The other thing interesting about the NFL lately is them being stricter about their rules and stuff. They've kind of softened up their game. They don't let people hit each other as hard. They've changed the rules and kind of made it a more toned down sort of match. And people have just started to lose interest between the political stuff and other things going on, like these rule changes and just them being kind of terrible and kind of anti-Trump at some times. It's been kind of off-putting and a lot of people have sort of given up on the NFL in a lot of ways. Now, this year is a little different since sports have all been pretty much canceled. NFL might come back this fall. We might be ready for sports and stuff by then. But for now, we don't really know what's going to happen. I think it might come back and it might be a better fall and we could get back to normal a little bit, but we'll see. But there are some other things that have been changing and that brings us to the topic of today's video. Before we get to the rest of today's video, let's first take a moment to check out our loyal sponsors at preparewithnobs.com. We're living in a strange new world, guys, and things are not normal now, to say the least. And they probably won't return to normal anytime soon. Food shortages will be the next shoe to drop too, so make sure you're prepared and have some dry food stored at your home today. No need to panic and wait in lines like everyone else. Just stock up on some of our high quality, long lasting dry food right here on our website today. The URL is, again, www.preparewithnobs.com. Today, the NFL has made a recent announcement where they're going to start giving their teams bonuses and extra gifts if they hire certain kinds of coaches. Now, I'm sure you could probably already guess where this is going. I know the question in the title probably made it pretty clear, but basically the NFL is saying if a team hires a black coach, they'll get better picks in the upcoming draft. Draft is whenever teams pick up players from either college or minor leagues and they draft them into the major leagues and start playing them in the big games but draft picks can be here or there you know draft picks can be good the first couple draft picks are usually significant because every year there's probably at least one big breakout player coming up from college but after that it gets a little strategic there's a lot of players that go there's a lot of rounds there's a lot of teams and people just try to pick up you know sorts of random spots that they might need a kicker they might might need someone on the defensive or offensive line, things like that. But this new development is certainly interesting. Hiring black coaches will get you better draft picks. I mean, you can't get much more biased and social justice warrior than that. This is very woke move, a very progressive uh, kind of left-leaning kind of thing. It's like affirmative action in sports, and that's why a lot of people have been upset. This tweet from Jim Trotter has more details. It says, Breaking NFL owners will vote next week on a resolution that would improve a team's draft position if it hires a person of color as head coach or general manager per sources. Currently, there are only two black GMs and four head coaches of color, matching 17-year low. And there's more details in that article, which we'll get to in a little bit. But right now, I think it's already a little ridiculous because, first of all, let's think about the NFL for a minute, okay? Sure, there's only a couple of people of color coaching but what about all the other positions I mean we got to really recognize that it's obviously a sport that's dominated by black people nothing wrong with that either that's not me complaining it's just pointing something out I mean how come these other positions aren't getting this sort of affirmative action treatment like for example I saw someone mention um, are cornerbacks going to be sort of giving bonuses if we hire a black cornerback or what about quarterback I know those names sound similar but they're different positions and the quarterback is 
is typically white. And would that be a thing that they'd give a bonus if it was like a black or brown quarterback now? Like all these positions have sorts of dominating races. Kickers tend to be white too, uh, but the rest of the team tends to be black. So it's just a dominated sport by minorities already. So the fact that they want to push this into the coaches is pretty ridiculous. And it's also just kind of anti the whole point of picking a coach. Like you want to pick the best coach possible. You don't want to pick a coach because they're a certain skin color. It's kind of ridiculous. Beefer Sutherland says, as a minority myself, I always want as many hires to be head coach, but the percentages of coaches matches the population. Why would a team pass on a head coach if he's the best candidate simply on race? Doesn't make much sense to me. This proposal is just odd. Yeah, it's very odd, very biased, and a very, you know, it's kind of anti-white, pro-minority. It's leftist bullshit coming through in this crappy NFL league that's been getting more and more progressive by the year. This mango guy says something interesting too. He says, this incentive makes it seem like minority co- coaches are worse at their jobs. So to make up for it, they give them better draft positions. It's like, yeah, it's like they're saying, oh, they're not as good. They're not as many. And I think that's why they're trying to give people bonuses and it's like whenever they give a company like hiring bonuses for hiring uh, certain races or certain people there's uh, criminals if you hire criminals your company will get a little bonus or something like that like that's kind of what we're going towards here and and the the point is I don't think it's necessarily that uh, white guys are better coaches I think there's just more of them out there there's not as many black coaches and it just that's just why there's fewer spots being filled by them in the NFL Someone says this has got to be fake. This is racist against white coaches and executives. I agree with that part. Heaven forbid a team hires a candidate based off of being qualified. Let's use draft picks to try and lead teams' hands. Nice. Blue, black, white, pink, green, who cares? Should be most qualified for the job. The most qualified person. Yeah, that's the point. You got to hire the best person, not someone who is just a certain skin color that kind of gives you guys credit and virtue signaling. This is virtue signaling by the NFL. Now, granted, this hasn't been passed yet. It's just a possible resolution. I wouldn't be surprised if it was passed, though. And I will also note that these draft picks, it's not the biggest deal. It's possibly, you know, if you get a number one draft pick, you might pick up someone that's the best player and becomes like a league leading player, like say, uh, Peyton Manning or something like that. You know, once in a while you'll get a big good draft pick, but most of the time, like 90% of the time, it's just filling in little spots. Maybe you get lucky. Um, most of the time, you know, college players, they don't always end up being the biggest stars. Like it just doesn't always show in that system. It has to transfer and you learn a lot of different things in the NFL. But the point stands this incentive is baloney, it's silly. It's uh, race-based, and it's them virtue signaling. The NFL is trying to virtue signal again, just like they did when they went through the whole kneeling at the anthem and changing the rules and this and that. So with that said, let's check this article. Let's go to NFL.com and see what else they say. Owners to vote on resolution to incentivize minority head coach and GM hires. This looks like there's a video. During his State of the League address three months ago at Super Bowl LIV in Miami, Commissioner Roger Goodell acknowledged a need to increase the opportunities for minorities to become head coaches and general managers. Clearly, we are not where we want to be on this level, he said. It's clear we need to change. We have already begun discussing those changes, what stages we can take next to determine better outcomes. The call to action grew even louder after only one of the five coaching vacancies during the offseason was filled by a person of color, continuing a trend in which three of the past 20 openings have gone to a minority. Now, in perhaps its most aggressive and controversial attempt to address the issue, the league will present a pair of resolutions this coming Tuesday during the owner's virtual meeting that it hopes will level the playing field. Now we're talking about the draft thing again, and it's just another point to the point is they don't understand what minority means. I mean, the point is these minorities aren't as many people here. So of course they're not going to fill as many openings. There's, you know, 75% of the country is still white American, European descendant, and the other percentages are still there. They're important. I have nothing against anyone on this list, any of the races. Everyone deserves a shot. But I think everyone already gets a shot. Like, if a coach was good, if an Asian female was a really good NFL coach, she would be hired. If we had a black gay person who was in a wheelchair that was a really good coach, they would get hired too. I mean, 
this isn't a race thing. And that's the, what I'd hate too, is I hate the implication. That's what's going on here is that they're implying that a lot of white coaches are getting hired and it's because of racism. It's not. It's because those guys are good at football. They know about it. They're good at coaching. They have experience. They've been in the system for years. They've trained. I mean, that's the real reason here. And I don't like them implying, oh, you know, white people just get this kind of white privilege and then they're going to get put into po places of power just because they don't have any requirements. They don't have any sort of experience or good things behind them. That's just not true. These guys did their work, and I'm sure if they don't work out, the, the president of their company will fire them. They'll find a new coach. These coaches don't just get hired and put in because of the race, and that's what's implied here, and that's the worst thing. And the other thing that's the worst part is if you think about their proposal, now first they're implying that white people are hired because of the race and their solution to that is to hire minorities because of the race so the point is okay is it wrong to hire people because of race now because these people that say it's bad are also suggesting we do that so what are you saying dude why are you being so contradictory this is not makes sense you got to think about it like that like you can't say it's wrong to hire these people who aren't really hired by the race by the way but even if they were you can't say that's wrong because now you want that to happen to your preferred group the whole point here is and the greater general point is this is anti-white this is against white people this is race baiting it's also virtue signaling and it's a sign of the nfl's decline the first would remove the long-standing and anti-tampering barrier that permits clubs to block assistant coaches from interviewing for coordinator positions with other clubs. Even though having coordinator experience is typically the final and most significant step in becoming a head coach. The other would incentivize the hiring of minorities as head coaches or primary football executives by rewarding teams with improved draft slots, multiple sources told NFL.com. The sources spoke on the condition of anonymity because of the sensitive nature of the topic. The league declined to comment Friday on this specific agenda for Tuesday's meeting, but if the resolutions were to be voted in under the league policy on equal employment and workplace diversity, they would work as follows. About to get into some more details about this. Um, it's a little boring, but it is interesting to see how they're thinking. You know, why are they thinking about this? What is spawning this. I know they want more minorities, but do they really think it's that unfair? Is it racism? Like there's nothing wrong here. I don't they're fixing a problem that doesn't exist. If a team hires a minority coach, that team in the draft preceding the coach's second season would move up six spots from where it slotted to pick in the third round. A team would jump 10 spots under the same scenario for hiring a person of color as a primary football executive, a position more commonly known as general manager. If a team were to fill both positions with diverse candidates in the same year, that club could jump 16 spots, 6 for the coach, 10 for the GM, and potentially move from the top of the third round to the middle of the second round. Another incentive, a team's fourth round pick would climb 5 spots in the draft preceding the coach or GM's third year if he's still with the team. That is considered significant because Steve Wilkes and Vance Joseph, two of the four African American head coaches hired since 2017, were fired after one or two seasons respectively. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't even know what to say here. I think they're implying that those coaches were fired because they were black or something. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're fired because they didn't coach well or they didn't fit that club system. Like, they weren't doing their job right, so they got fired and found someone else. But this seems to be implying, oh, they were fired too soon because they're minorities. I'm not buying that. I'm not going to go with this. I'm not going to go with this race-based stuff. And if the NFL passes this, it's going to be a ridiculous, ridiculous scenario. This is bad news. This is stupid. Uh, granted, like I said, I know these spots in the draft, they're not necessarily as super significant. They might help. Uh, we'll see. But if they pass this, I mean, the first thing I thought in the beginning was there's going to be a lot of teams just hiring these black coaches and stuff just to get these draft picks. But then at the same time, those guys are going to end up being not as qualified, maybe not as good. And that team is really going to suffer. Um, I don't know if they'll see that coming. I think a lot of teams will just ignore this because it's like, yeah, we don't need those draft picks. Like, we're not going to just hire some dudes just to get some draft picks. Like, you're better off just hiring the best people in the beginning and using the draft picks you get. And with that said, I mean, and then we go back to this implication like, oh, 
minority coaches are fired quicker. Well, did you ever consider the fact that they weren't that good? I mean, I don't think it's because they're minority. It's not because they're black. It's just in this situation, these two coaches were fired because they didn't make it. They couldn't cut it, and that's why their team had to let them go. If passed, the changes would be a radical departure from current protocol. League officials have been trying for years to implement programs and procedures that would increase advancement opportunities for minorities, from adopting the Rooney Rule in 2003 to increase fellowship positions and bringing in pro and college coaches for networking and empowerment summits, to working with clubs to allocate more entry-level positions to diverse candidates. In addition to the coaching hires, only two of the 32 GM positions currently belong to someone of color. Alarming statistics considering 70% of head coach hires during the past three years came from two positions, quarterbacks coach and offensive coordinator. Okay, more details and more proof that the NFL has been trying to get woke for a while. Uh, The last thing I'll say, and this reminds me of a TV show actually, Ballers had this kind of story. That's an HBO show. They cover kinds of sports things. It's like a sports version of Entourage kind of basically it stars the rock it's actually a pretty good show but i kind of had some qualms with the way it ended um it ended kind of abruptly for one and for two uh it made had this ending not to spoil it too much but basically the rock or dwayne johnson his character ends up owning a football team and he has this kind of back and forth with the NFL and he goes all self-righteous and is like, you know, this room of owners is too white and we need to diversify. And he goes over all the same stuff that we're talking about here. They're talking about GMs and stuff in this article. They're talking about coaches, but they also say this about the owners and they, and they, that's why they hired in the show on ballers. That's why they hired and gave the ownership to the rock because they wanted to have a black owner and kind of brag about that. So there was a sort of, kind of reflection of the way the NFL virtue signals, but then at the same time, the show was taking the very liberal side, like The Rock was getting all self-righteous, all virtue signaling and baloney, and it was terrible. And it just reminds me of this idea. It's kind of like that show almost predicted that they would do something like this in the NFL. They would get all woke like this, now that I think about it. And it's really tough to watch. I used to watch the NFL, and I used to be the biggest football fan. I mean, that was my favorite sport. I still love it, but I'm not, like, watching it. I'm not excited about the NFL anymore. You can't whenever they go and do all this woke, anti-American, anti-white, race-baiting bullcrap. That about wraps things up. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you leave some comments below. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about the NFL, their new rules, their virtue signaling, and all that. And also, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps us get shared and get the word out there. And until next time, have a great day.